I was always a very big Don Rickles fan, uh, Kevin. I loved his appearances on The Tonight Show when he would seemingly just be riffing with Johnny and Ed. And I know he would, he would be so canceled in today's society. Oh, I, I know. Like it wouldn't hold up today with he liked to go out and whatever you were in the audience, whatever race, whatever ethnicity, he had ammunition for you. So I guess an equal opportunity offender is what they might call. But um, yeah, so I, I I dug what he did. So now, of course, famously, he's in Casino, the film with De Niro. Now, nobody dare give Robert De Niro shit on a set in a Scorsese movie at that time in his at that pinnacle in his career, except someone like Don Rickles. So here's Don Rickles stiffing De Niro, as told by um, Kevin Pollack. Kevin Pollack here on the Rich Eisen Show. And in terms of Casino, yeah. of all the people that I would want to ask you about, it has to be Rickles. Don Rickles. Uh, hands down, right? Yeah, I mean, because watching him rip into De Niro on set in the middle of a take, there's no greater joy, really. I think I've seen that on, on Twitter, right? Isn't that, what, what did he do? He just ripped on him in the middle of a take? or? Well, the camera's rolling around the casino floor. There's 100 extras. Right. Rickles is standing next to De Niro in a scene. Mm -hmm. De Niro is acting, saying his dialogue. Rickles' character is just standing there, as he does for most of the film. <laughs> He's not supposed to speak. And in the middle of the take, he looked at De Niro and said, Is that the way you're going to do it? Like that? No, no, you got the awards. I'm sure you know what you're doing. Go ahead. And, you know, <laughs> every sphincter tightens on set. Nobody knows how... Bob, as we're forced to call him, is going to react. Right. But Rickles knew that he owned De Niro because De Niro worshipped Rickles. And, and Rickles told me this one day. He said, early on, he said, I own this guy because when he was a kid, there were two types of peer groups on the street corners in New York. When right. De Niro grew up, there was doo-wop groups and put-down groups. And De Niro, Demir De Niro, was in a put-down group. Your mother this, your mother that, right? Right. So to them, Rickles was God. And Rickles found out about it and went after him every day. Did he really? It was unbelievable. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Yeah. That's great. I, I actually have a clip of not that instance, but there's an outtake of the two of them on set. Here you go. I say something wrong? You're supposed to say I should have known better. Go back. <laughs> but okay. I kinda... Right? Or was it just a, cr a credit here? Okay. I say something wrong? You're supposed to say I should have known better. I'm no, saying. <laughs> For the kind of money you're making, what's, read the what's, card. What's, Learn the thing. You gotta pop out, Fred. Right? Sit in here and study. <laughs> with your method acting, with the breathing, with the bullshit. <laughs> Do the lines and let's get out of here. <laughs> he was the best. Never got to see Rickles. I saw Tony Bennett. I never got to see Rickles. Did I tell you my, my uh, so um, I don't know what night it is. My, my wife and I were watching the, the Lady Gaga uh, gimmick. Yes. So it's, it's, so I, I walk in and um, Lady Gaga is, is singing, a, a, you know, so, singing a song. And uh, I was never a, a Lady Gaga fan until uh, – a Star is Born that was with the remake she did with Bradley. Right. Cooper. I just thought she was fucking, I just thought she was amazing. I really dug the film. And, um, and so I'm like, no, I'll leave that. So my wife's like, really? I said, yeah, I'll watch Lady Gaga. I said, I think she's fucking guy. She said, she's like so funny. And like when you see her like in that kind of a, a setting, she's so over the top. Mm -hmm. You know, she's so she's vivacious. She's got a, you know pipes, and I think we talked about this on uh, with Kevin. And so I, I had this discussion with you. I didn't remember if it was off air or yeah, on the Nash so, and Friends. So okay. so I so I she she like does like two or three numbers, and I go take a piss, and so I got to go like out of the TV room through the kitchen. And into the, 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 and the there's a little half bath that, that's over there. So I take my piss, and I'm walking back into the room. And we and to walk in. We've got this big arch. Um, that Billy we, arch. We, 
to, to the arch where we um this is where we added the two or the old home and the and the the that was a rental into the new home so there's this arch that uh and as i'm walking through the arch i look and she's on fucking stage with tony bennett and i'm like i said baby i said he's dead she you said, say that. Yeah, you I, have I said, to point this out to Tom. I'm like, I, I'm, I'm, so, I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> like, I'm thinking that this is a tribute show. No, this is a fucking replay of a show that was uh, Tony Bennett's 95th His birthday, birthday, right? Yeah, right. And I, I'm just so like, it was one of those hologram deals. No, I just, <laughs> it's just I can't. I came in and it was just like I was so. I my mind was completely set because uh, it was an only an hour long show, so a little tribute to, to Tony Bennett. She's going to sing some of his classics. She'll end it with uh, "Left My Heart in San Francisco." We'll get the fuck out of there. We'll go out and I'll get to watch something I want to watch. And I come in there and Tony's on there and fucking, you know, Tony was. He was ninety five, man. I mean, he was he was he was still. I mean, he could still fucking hit, hit some notes, but he was struggling. Yeah, you know, there was a couple. I mean, it was it was kind of wasn't sad because I mean, you know, and I, I know that he was, you know, he was he was in, in had dementia. Mm-hmm. You know, had some had some things going on, but it was just like it. I was looking for this uplifting thing, and I walked in there, and it's just like ah, oh, like he passed away like i I didn't want to see him like that's not what i wanted yeah you know but i saw him and he at one point in the show he was talking about how the theaters are constructed i saw him at the performing arts center in in, uh, newark and he's talking about how he's like you don't realize how these theaters are constructed so that the sound carries and you know, we're listening on speakers and stuff, but you don't realize. And he puts the mic down, and he steps to the foot of the stage, past the speakers. No one's playing. The bands of the audience is quiet. And he starts to sing a cappella. And I was high up. I could hear him like he was standing next to me. Of course, it is the construction of the theaters, but the power of his voice was amazing. They don't make guys like that no more, these singers. They require on no, all these pro tools and shit like that. No, it was up. I could hear him like he was standing next to me. Of course, it is the construction of the theaters, but the power of his voice was amazing. They don't make guys like that no more. These singers, they require no, he... on all these pro tools and shit like that. No, it was. <clears throat> 